Welcome back to Network Africa. Nurses in Kenya who joined doctors in a nationwide strike last week, paralyzing services in public hospitals, have returned to work. They ended their strike after their union signed a return to work deal. Doctors have ignored several calls to return to work, saying they would only do so when a pay package deal agreed in 2013 is honored. The Ministry of Health stated in a tweet details of the agreement, saying outstanding issues have been resolved. And Algerian authorities have launched a crackdown on hundreds of African immigrants and their families who have been illegally living and working in the country. Authorities raided the homes of hundreds and sent them back to their countries, while others who managed to escape are still on the run. A group of migrant workers who live in this house in the Algerian capital of Algiers say they fear for their safety in the North African country. Algerian authorities started a crackdown on illegal migrants, resulting in hundreds of people being deported. Only last week, authorities raided homes in the city's slums and sent migrants to detention camps on the outskirts of Algiers. Zara, a Congolese migrant, is afraid to leave the overcrowded property for fear of being arrested. I was so scared. We, we are all scared. We can't even go out to buy anything. We, are, we have been hungry for the past six days because if we go out, they will catch us and take us, repatriate us. So we have been scared, we have been staying inside this house. I'm very fear. I want to leave this country. I need a help. I need a help. I don't have much talk to talk. Why? Because I'm, I have a fear in my heart. I'm not free. I'm not free in this country at all. I'm not free. I need a help. I need a help. I have a young baby. I have a young baby with me. So. I don't know what to say. We don't walk free on the road. This isn't the first time for the oil-producing nation to crack down on illegal African migrants. Last year, Algeria deported thousands of migrants to Niger, mostly women and children who came to beg on the streets as part of a bilateral agreement between Algiers and Niamey intended to curb illegal immigration. But in recent years, the number of people taking the dangerous route to Europe from West Africa has swelled. According to a Human Rights Watch report released on Friday, over 1,400 migrants have been forcibly deported from Algeria this month in one of the biggest roundups seen this year. Christmas is about a week away, and here in Nigeria, prices of some commodities have doubled in the last year, resulting in some anger on how the government is handling the economy. With Christmas just weeks away, Dolakwa Beckley was among a throng of shoppers haggling at a market in Nigeria's commercial capital, Lagos, where the prices of some goods have doubled in the last year. Nigeria is currently in its first recession in 25 years, and a rise in inflation to an 11-year high of 18.3%. We wanted a better economy, and things are turning upside down, even worse than the way we, it was before. So, that's not, that's not the change we voted for. We wanted things to improve, and it has not improved. Electricity, no water. Imagine now, people, common pure water, such a pure, they have strike. They want to increase the price of pure water. So, that's not easy. President Buhari's administration says the woes of Africa's biggest economy stem from the previous government's failure to set money aside in the years when Nigeria's crude oil fetched over $100 a barrel before the price plunged in late 2014. It now stands at around $56. The president is submitting a record budget of 7.2 trillion naira to the lawmakers, drawing partly on foreign borrowing to pay for a boost in capital spending. But in a country where the UN estimates that 70% of the 180 million inhabitants live on a dollar a day, anger at the state of the economy is tangible. Despite a 40% devaluation of the naira currency in June, a shortage of dollars persists and they fetch a premium of up to 40% on the black market. In Nigeria's import-driven economy, this has pushed up the cost of everything from rice to machine spare parts. Victor Adinya, 
A civil servant at the market says that a bag of rice can cost up to 19 to 20,000 naira. People are dying now, like things before now, like this six months period, you know, like commodities, bag of rice, oil, all these stuff. We get them like if you're going for the best for 19,000, then I swing something thousand. The, the, some bags of rice are 19, 20,000. So it's just too expensive for the masses. Another shopper at the market, Ayo Mokbe, a 27 year old makeup artist, said she was contemplating joining the thousands of Africans who leave each year to seek a better life in the United States or Europe. There's no job for us. I finished 2010 with my NYC. I could not get a job. But I had to help myself. I had to employ myself. I started working. I had to hustle all year and there. But now even the hustling is never paying anymore. As the year gradually comes to an end, Nigerians can only hope for the better. A group of women from disadvantaged backgrounds in South Africa have found a way to support their families by baking and selling cookies. The women sell through an initiative that employs women from townships and enables them to learn new skills and earn a regular income. Kailitsha Cookies is a unique bakery that employs women who mainly come from the nearby Kailitsha township and aims to equip them with skills to enable them bake premium cookies that can help them earn a decent income. Most of the women have never been in formal employment and working at the bakery has enabled them to support their families. The bakery makes over 30,000 cookies a day with most of the work done manually. The bakery project was started in 2004 as a training institute that relied on donors for support. Today, the bakery is under new management and is now a profit-making business that sells its products to customers in parts of the country and abroad, supporting over 90 women working at the bakery. The bakery has a turnover of about 72,000 US dollars a month and each employee has a share of 30% of the company through a trust fund. For me, working with them, it's, it's the, we like family, you know, it's, it's very close to my heart because um, most of them when they come here, um, they've never worked before and um, they don't even Maybe they're single parents, so they need to take their kids to school and put food on the table. The culture cookies helped me a lot. When I came here, it was nothing. And now I have a man, end of the month, to look after my family and my child. Kailitsha, South Africa's second largest township, lies within minutes of some of the country's wealthiest neighborhoods, but many residents live in poverty. Unemployment is the largest driver of poverty in the country, according to the country's statistics office, with South Africa's unemployment rate indicating that over 5.6 million people are now out of work. Africa's most advanced economy is on the brink of recession after contracting 1.2% earlier in the year as manufacturing and mining activity shrunk. With the government encouraging entrepreneurs to create jobs, Initiatives like Kayaletsha Cookies can provide much-needed income for unemployed people. Crystal Tars Hotel and Spa, located in the city, is one of the bakery's clients. Job creation, employment creation is something that's very important, not only to our property, but to the entire estate. Um, and beyond just the employment that comes from the making of the cookies, where possible we do try and employ their staff into our own hotels. The women plan to increase their production and sales by expanding the business even further. With their earnings, they've been able to invest in land meant for growing organic vegetables for sale as they seek more sustainable ways to make a living and meet their family's needs. And that's it on today's program. Thank you so much for watching. I am Bissi Adebayo.